And what we basically do is we just have this little box, and you see that this diorama actually shows a little sequence of nice cars. I was playing with this when I was a kid, and it just reminds me of cool times. But you know, when the light goes down, you start to see all the detail that's still in the image. But when the light goes up, and we just reach a specific point in what we call scene light, and the scene light is actually what a camera is capturing, then you suddenly see that there is some information starting to miss. There's missing information. The display actually runs out of steam. It's called clipping. Now, you have much more over here, because this is a 2000 nit display, and you might say, what, what, 2000 nits? What the heck is 2000 nits? Isn't that too much? And I would say, no, not really, because today was a sunny day in Paris. If you go outside and you have all that bright light, it's not too much for your eye. Your eye easily adopts to what actually you see. But the beauty is, the more light you have, think a bit like the z-axis, the more light I have, the more color saturation I actually can create. So one thing goes with the other. And so that's where color volume becomes important. Now in the past, we had measuring methods that were based on the old CRT days. Maybe you still know what a CRT is. That's the thick, big, bulky thing, right? That is so heavy that you almost have to build a house around the TV. So at the end of the day, that means all the standards were based on that too. HD and everything. And so it was not the real reproduction if you would take those old measurement methods and try to compare displays with each other. It would tell you they're almost the same, but they're not. And the reason for that is because we have a new measurement method. I don't want to get too complicating. I'll leave it with this. But at the end, we can show basically what the difference is in terms of luminance and color at the same time, which is like a 3D model. And that's why we call it a volume, because it has height and it has size, and it's like, like a balloon, right? And so you see the top right hand corner is basically the color volume of the new QLED TV models of the displays. And the bottom one basically is a smaller color volume based on the limitations of the particular display technology. So if I want to show and show you that's not just a fake, I can show you a measurement. And so we switch to another, another picture. And I see, no, we do this this way. Yeah. The PC is a little bit, let's say, doesn't like us very much today. <clears throat> So you see, now this is an image, as it actually also could have been produced in post, meaning you have a very high luminance red, and high luminance green, and high luminance blue, and every other color, based on the display and what it can do. And in comparison, you could have a production monitor that also has a very high light output, and so the color volume is basically a very white one. And what you want is basically reproduce that at home as well. And so we can take a measurement. Shall I do it? Okay. So if we first measure green, for example, what you should see now is basically now this is the saturation level within the color volume of that particular color. And if we would measure that on the other monitor, you see, now this is basically what that monitor can do. So in terms of color volume and in terms of saturation level, you see that we would end up somewhere here compared to a display that has a much wider color, gum, uh, color volume. And this becomes important if you want to reproduce content correctly because everything that's shot and then post-produced in post-production is actually mastered on a reference monitor or you have a camera that is actually putting out a video signal that can cope with that dynamic range and with that color volume the camera actually provides. So if you want to preserve the creative intent then you actually want to use a display that has similar luminance values and that reproduces the color volume accordingly. Speaking of correct image, we also have now support for the uh, Calman software. So Calman is a calibration software that is mainly used in the production environment. So if you want to calibrate a, a camera monitor, a production monitor, a reference monitor, what have you. And it's very important to have color accuracy within the entire workflow in the production. But you can also use the same software to calibrate a consumer TV. <coughs> and 
that is what we actually now can do automatically. It's called AutoCal, and now Samsung supports that we can talk to the Samsung TV. And instead of using the remote control and doing all that kind of our stuff of calibration, you can go actually in, just do some slight tweaking, and then just run everything automatically. So you put a meter on top of this, and then it calibrates itself. And after calibration, it says, okay, you're fine, that's it, and it stores everything in the memory. And you can do it for HDR, you can do it for SDR, and so you get the best possible image quality and the best representation of color volume as, for example, most likely a reference monitor had because it had a similar color volume. So, <clears throat> this is basically it. Maybe there are some questions. Otherwise, 